Okay, my name is Daniel O'Connor. I am a U.S. citizen who is living and residing in Honduras. I've been in Honduras for the past 20 years. Um, I'd be happy to. Uh, the question is related to the sequence of events that has led us to where we are today with the crisis in Honduras. And there's a great deal of concern among civil society in Honduras to defend the rule of law, the principles of democracy, for what is right and for what is moral. We always say that we're doing this for our children. What, what example are we setting for our children? And to allow an ex-president, a person of power, to completely disregard the rule of law and the Constitution is unacceptable anywhere, and certainly here in Honduras. I think if, if we want to roll back the calendar and to get a keen understanding of where civil society was awakened to something that was terribly admiss, uh, the Honduras participation in ALBA was certainly a warning flag and it certainly rendered our attention. But it wasn't until January when the president tried to stack the Supreme Court with nominees that were not eligible and had not gone through the verification process. He threatened Congress. The U.S. ambassador was aware of what was happening. And we almost had a technical coup in January of this year. If we look back to that date, it was at the 11th hour that a deal was finally reached and the president backed down on his demand or insistence that his candidates be put into the Supreme Court when they were not eligible and not gone through a verification process as stipulated by the Constitution and by the Supreme Court. Excuse me, you can feel free to look at him and look back to the okay. camera so that you don't feel too stuck. Uh, yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm sort of <laughs> frozen well, there. Yeah, here's your two, two spots. Okay. Okay, good. Pardon me? Daniel. Más arriba. Okay. I don't know. I'm not used to this, so it's, it's all new to me. Okay. Okay, you got it, right? Yeah. Uh, there, there's no question that his transgressions are clearly documented. Um, what we as Americans fail to realize is that Honduras has a constitution, and we, while it may not be as sophisticated as the constitution in the United States, it is still the Honduran constitution, and it has to be respected. It is not the right or the role of the United Nations or the OAS or even the United States for that matter to impart their will or their interpretation on a Honduran constitution or a Honduras problem. Yeah, he said it was the worst constitution in the world and, and clearly there's opportunities for improvement but the improvement process that 
ex-president Zelaya proposed isn't the way to get social change implemented in Honduras. There is a process for changing the Constitution. You can't do it the way that President Zelaya wanted to do it. When he was told he was violating the Constitution, when he was told by the Supreme Court his actions were illegal, he continued to push on. He was, he was um, encouraged. He was mentored by Chavez. He was mentored by Ortega. He was encouraged by the, Chavez, uh, the Castro brothers. And, and he continued to behave as if the opinions of his own Congress, of which his party had a majority, of the Supreme Court, of the public ministry, public defender's office, the attorney general, that all of these institutions, their opinions didn't matter. It was as if he had one goal and one objective in mind, and he wanted to achieve it regardless of the rule of law. There's a, uh, there's a clear pattern of what Zelaya was emulating. And if you look at the history of Venezuela and you look at the history of, of uh, the recent politics in Ecuador, he was following a clear pattern. And, and the idea of, of trying to establish a constitutional assembly outside the protocol of the Honduran Constitution is completely unacceptable. The reason, the reason I feel compelled to come to Honduras is because I, I, and I want you to comment on this there. This is the first time that I have seen since Chavez came to power that anyone has stood up against him. And I, I respected the government of Honduras, the Supreme Court, the military, and the Congress for taking a stand um, well, I hope that they do. I hope that the message begins to filter out. Um, Honduras is the little country that could. It's, uh, it's got a big heart. It has passionate people. They're pe peaceful. They're loving people. Um, they don't have this type of experience in extreme political turmoil. They're not used to violence and violent protests, and, and, and they find it disgraceful. And, 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 and the soul of the country has been wounded by these very aggressive demonstrations and, and this very aggressive behavior against a very good society, a loving society, a peaceful society. I mean, the, the culture in this country is extraordinary. I have the good fortune of traveling around the world in my business. I work in the tourism sector and sustainable tourism development. So I see cultures throughout Latin America and the Caribbean and I chose to base my business here in Honduras because of the people. And and that that very basic freedom that 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 attitude that very peaceful aura has been violated and has been completely disrupted over the last 18 months by this progressive, aggressive behavior on the part of ex-President Zelaya in what we saw as a positioning to extend his power identical to what Chavez has done in Venezuela. Nicaragua. Uh, 
That's a fantastic question, and, 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 and it needs to be stated, and it really needs to be understood that every time this line was drawn in the sand and ex-president Zelaya stepped over it a little bit and the US government had no reaction, OAS had no reaction, it empowered him and emboldened him to go further and further. And this became a process where by Thursday before the president was removed from office. He was removed from office on a Sunday. On Thursday, he was able to amass a mob, break into a Air Force base, storm a warehouse, and steal ballot material that had been confiscated under order of the Supreme Court. That is not the role of a leader. That is not a leadership I mean, it, it, it was bizarre to the point of, I thought we were watching a movie, and, and in essence, we're, we were living a, a horror show. It was just incomprehensible to see the president standing there in his white hat, ordering people around and, and encouraging this violent and aggressive act against the people of Honduras. Um, yeah, I mean, let's look at the origin of these ballots to begin with. No one in Honduras was willing to print these ballots, so Chavez had these ballots printed in Venezuela and flown in on a Venezuelan military aircraft into Honduras. When ex-president Zelaya proceeded against the orders of the Supreme Court, against the orders of Congress, against the orders of the Attorney General to continue with this poll that he was conducting, the Supreme Court ordered these ballots seized. And after the 28th, during the investigations of the process, it came to light that there was offices within the National Statistics Agency that had data banks of computers with the results predetermined. The results were already into the system before a vote was even cast. That, that would be terrible. That would be a complete and utter betrayal of the faith in the institutions in Honduras. If, if Zelaya is reinstated, regardless of the conditions, it would tell the rest of the world, it would tell our children, it's okay to break the law if you're a powerful person. You may get some powerful allies from around the world and they'll overlook that and put you back into power because they believe that the process for removing Zelaya was incorrect. And two wrongs don't make a right, period. Thank you, Brother Daniel, for your time. Do you have any closing comments before we close? I would love for Americans to have an open mind and respect the Honduran sovereignty, to respect the Honduran institutions, to recognize that this problem is a Honduran problem that will be resolved within Honduras, 
and to please urge your congressmen, your senators, your contacts in the State Department to hands off, hands off the policy and let Honduras resolve this problem peacefully, amicably, and to defend the rule of law and constitution. Thank you. Yes, uh, my name is Osman Maduro, and I'm a businessman in Honduras. Uh, primarily, uh, my focus is the agricultural sector and uh, exporting uh, some of the main products that we produce in Honduras, uh, such as coffee, uh, farm-raised shrimp, uh, sesame seed, and other spices. So I work with many people in the, in the agricultural sector, what we call here the campesinos. No, uh, Honduras has a very, still a very substantial uh, rural account, economy. Well, uh, first of all, we have to, I think that the, the American public should realize that uh, our main partner economically is the United States and has been for more than a century, not to exaggerate. In other words, uh, the, our main invest, investment foreign investment are Americans are our main